It's time for baseball on MLB Network. Coming up, we've got a good matchup in store between the Colorado Rockies and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Two great hitters lead their teams to battle next on MLB Network. Jamison Tyon, a right-hander from Florida, gets the ball as the starter here. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Matt, this guy is a big power arm. Former first-round draft pick by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And listen, he's what they look like. Big, strong guy. Three pitch mix, 95 to 97 miles an hour with good life on his fastball. Overhand curveball and a straight changeup. The key to him, throwing strikes. If he's throwing strikes early, expect him to go deep into the game, and he could rack up a pile of strikeouts. Tyon is there. One away. And a chance now to check out the visiting Colorado Rockies. Mark DeRosa, what's your take on him this afternoon on the road? Matt, you focus on this lineup, the middle of the order jumps out at you because of the big power. But my focus today is on the table setters, the guys that set the tone. They have to be willing to work the count and find ways to get on base and create a little bit of havoc on the defense. A high fastball is in there. His batter pitcher line against Jamison Tyone. He's one for three. Popped him up. In there, a base hit. Batting third, third baseman, Nolan Arenado. Here's Nolan Arenado, a silver slugger winner a year ago in the National League. Owen won the count. Oh and one here it comes chopped weakly to the left scooped up and indeed no look at second he'll go straight to first and take the shoe around. Batting first pitch of the at bat ground ball foul down the left side the 0 1 pitch and a breaking ball stays outside. Takes a look at one catching the outside corner. So let's take a look at our umpire and crew in this one. Working the plate. Threw it right past him. A swing and a miss at the gas, and that ends the inning. Rocky strand one. Now the Pirates will get their first opportunity. No score. Chad Bettis gets the start for Colorado in this one. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Chad Bettis is all about attitude. Not a very big guy, but he's not afraid to attack the strike zone. Good fastball, 93 to 95, with a little bit of sinking action on it. Has a curveball and a slider, an occasional changeup. One of the keys to know if he's on early, getting some outs early on in counts. At the plate, Adam Frazier. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. And a high strike to begin the at bat. It's 0 and 1. A swing and a miss. Two quick strikes to start his afternoon. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. And it's fouled away. The 0 2 once more. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Blackman is under it. One out. And here's how Cliff Hurdle set his Pirates lineup for this one. Mark DeRosa, tell us about this lineup in a daytime home contest. Focusing on this lineup, Matt, one thing jumps out at me. They are going to have to be good at situational hitting. The guy on the opposition right now on the bump has been throwing the ball great. He's not going to give him anything. I know in today's game everybody's trying to go deep but I'm telling you a good hit and run taking that extra bag today might be the difference between winning and losing. This is pulled into right but he'll barely have to move out there in right as he hauls this one in for the second out. Well this one was squared up pretty good but just like pitches give up hits on well executed pitches batters make outs on balls they couldn't have hit much better. Here's the pitch. 
Ray. Drops in a strike to start the at-bat. Nothing in one. Not a bad take there on that first pitch. Not a real good idea to go up there looking for a changeup to hit. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap. Behind 0-2 now. Pitches away, but it's swung on and grounded to second. They'll whip this one to first in time, and that ends the inning. Down in order go the Pirates. We are still scoreless. Here's Cargo, Carlos Gonzalez, his batter pitcher line against Jamison Tyone. Just a couple of matchups, no hits in two at bats. Pulled high in the air out to right field. Under it is the right fielder. And he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. Take a look at the Pittsburgh Pirates defensive lineup. And let's take a look at the guy behind the dish, and that's Francisco Cervelli, one of the best ball framers in all our sport, a guy who's going to make his pitcher work for everything today. Standing in, David Dahl, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Ball one. Missed with a breaking ball. Sharp ground ball to third. Throw on to first, two gone. Into the box now, Ian Desmond. He'll work on keeping this top of the second alive. First pitch on its way. And this one's nowhere close as that bounces to the plate for ball one. No score here as we play inning number two. One and one to the Rockies' first baseman. One and two. You know, he's had a very economical start out there. Got through the first inning on just nine pitches. And he's got a chance to keep it in single digits again here in the second. Even count of two and two to Ian Desmond. Her ball locks him up strike three. And that's the third out. Three up, three down for Colorado. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Here's Starling Marte. Career numbers against Bettis. He's five for seven. Starling Marte. Here's the first pitch to him. Hit high and deep to right center. After it is Blackman. And a dive, but he can't pull it in out in right center. Around second. He's on his way to third. And he will make it all the way to third now as that mistake proves a costly one indeed. That was not the way this pitcher envisioned the beginning of the game going for him. Wasn't that bad of a pitch. He jumps all over it. Nobody can run it down. And he's standing at third feeling pretty good about himself. Here's the catcher, Francisco Cervelli. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Thought he had the inside corner that time, but it missed for ball one. Swing and a miss out in front of a changeup. Start of that swing a bit too early. Obviously looking to pull the baseball right there out in front on that off speed pitch. This will be an interesting sequence right here to see if he slows him down even more. And he grooves the fastball there. This is hit high and deep out to straightaway center field. And this is taken in shy of the wall, but that should be plenty deep to score the run. And the run will score as the Pirates are on the board first. It's one to nothing. Great job of offensive execution there. Lead off triple and then the sack fly to bring home a run. So striding in, Josh Harrison. He'll get to take his first cuts here. Here comes the first pitch. 
Uh, had him lunging at that one out of the zone, and that's strike one. Clean slate on the base pass after that sack fly a minute ago, so now's the time to be aggressive with these hitters. Go right after them and try to get out of this inning with only one run scored. A leaping try, but it's out of his reach and into the outfield. Boy, so frustrating as a pitcher. You make a quality pitch on the inside half of the plate right there. Try to bust him in, D-Row, and he fights it off the other way. Yeah, you tip your hat to the pitcher right there. He executed his pitch, but nice job by the offensive player. Fighting. It doesn't matter what it looks like. A knock's a knock. This is it. High in the air out toward left center. Blackman will put this one away, and that's out number two. Here's Jordy Mercer now. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. He's ready. Here's the first offering. A pitch out. The throw. And they'll nail him at second on a brilliant call to. The Steel City skyline on a nice day for baseball in western Pennsylvania. Happy to have you with us on MLB Network. First pitch on its way. Swung on and missed, outclassed by that fastball for a strike. Yeah, guys, the key to hitting in the big leagues is to hit off the heater, and this guy is obviously sitting something else. Well, I had him reaching at thin air that time, and he's very quickly down 0 and 2. Man, that's another ugly swing right there. This team is just struggling so mightily to get on base. They've looked off balance all game. Got him swinging on the fastball there. Chris Iannetta is retired to kick off the inning. This is what a power pitcher will do to you if he executes his pitches. That was a three-pitch strikeout. And with the kind of stuff that he has, it's not uncommon for him to absolutely dominate certain guys. And that's in there for strike one. One out, nobody on. Popped him up. Bell is over and he tucks it away for the second out. Now batting, center fielder, Charlie Blackman. Now to the plate, Charlie Blackman. He's a dangerous hitter indeed as the reigning batting champion in the National League. Pulled toward right center field. Marte calls for it. And that retires the side. One, two, three, go the Rockies. They trail this one one to nothing. Digging in, Jordy Mercer as we move on to the bottom of inning number three. Here's the first pitch to him. There's a fastball that just misses ball one. On the ground to the left side. Throw on to first, and one shortstop grounds out to the other, one away. So here now is the pitcher, Jamison Tyon. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Swing and a miss way behind the big fastball. I think he just subscribed to the swing hard in case you hit it philosophy of hitting as a pitcher why not better than standing up there like you've never held a bat before but pretty much right at the left fielder as he How takes it in for the second out Adam Frazier. and that'll bring in Adam Frazier so far 0 for 1 with a fly out first pitch of the at bat on its way swing and a miss at a first pitch change up nothing in one great execution of that change up right there Great arm action. Batter was totally out front on that one. Fouled off. Line drive to left. And that'll get down for a two out single. And that means that Corey Dickerson will bat with two out. How frustrating is that, Dan? He tries to bury something in with two strikes, and this guy throws out a fillet of fish to the opposite field. You know, sometimes you have to tip your cap that inside out swing. As a pitcher, you think you've thrown a good pitch, but sometimes as a hitter, they put a good a swing on it and still ends up for a base hit. Into the box, Corey Dickerson lifted the other way down the left field line. Waiting on it is Dahl, and the inning is over. 
So it's no runs on a hit, no errors, and a man left. Three innings complete. Bucks out in front, one to nothing. Digging in for his second at bat, DJ LeMayhew. He singled his last time up. First offering on its way. Oh, and he gets the inning started with a bang as this is hit high and deep to left field. Gone to lead off the inning. A solo shot here to left as the Rockies pull even now at one apiece. Well, if you're going to give up a towering blast to one of the best players in their lineup, it's better to do it with no one on base. It stings, sure, but a solo shot isn't going to be the deciding factor in a game. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Nolan Arenado. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. No balls in one strike. Swing and a miss on the slider, and he's quickly behind nothing in two. The lineup top to bottom looks like they have no approach or game plan whatsoever. It's like they're deciding to swing before the pitch is even coming out of the pitcher's hand. So the breaking ball locked him up there. Nolan Arenado goes down to become the first out here in the fourth. We know he's probably still thinking about that game time home run he just gave up, but I'm going to give him credit for not showing that it's bothering him. When you come back and strike out the next guy, it shows you've still got your head in the right place. That's wide 2-0. Big cut at the 2-0 slider, but he comes up empty, 2-1. And it's two balls and two strikes now. And a fastball blew it right by him, and there are two down. This tells me a lot about this guy. He's done a real nice job bouncing back from that home run to strike out the next two guys. Sometimes you're going to get taken deep, but it's all about how you respond that really matters. Ball one. One run, two hits. No errors in the ballgame for the Rockies thus far. Grounder down the line at third, but a foul ball, one and one. A ball and two strikes now. Hey, I got to commend him a little bit. Lead off homer, and now he's one pitch away from getting out of this inning without any further damage. A swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes, and that will retire the side. One in the inning, and it comes from a rather unlikely power source. Bottom of the fourth coming up. All even now at 1-1. Riding in once again, Josh Bell. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. First pitch of the at bat. A knee buckler, and he swings and misses at it. Lifted in the air out towards left center. Blackman on the move. And he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. Here's Starling Marte. He smacked a triple and later scored his first time around. First pitch on its way. Just a bit jumpy that time. Swung on and missed. This guy's been on cruise control as we head into the middle innings of this one. And one of the big factors why, how about 80% of his first pitches have been for strikes. Into the windup. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. Here's the catcher, Francisco Cervelli. Francisco Cervelli. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. There's a strike. Cervelli, a 32-year-old veteran. This is his 10th season at the major league level, so almost a decade, which is quite an accomplishment. That's in there, and he's deep in the hole now, 0-2. Hey, from an offensive standpoint, you better get it ready. This guy is not throwing a ton of pitches. He's confident in his stuff. He's pounding the zone. He's got two quick. Well, the play's been made, and that retires the side. And that'll bring up the speedy outfielder, David Dahl. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. 
ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And he fouls this one off. Misses with it one and one. These guys have got to be frustrated as an offensive unit so far in this one. They haven't been able to crack the code on their opponent, but it's not like they're getting great pitches to hit either. This starter has kept the ball on the corners of the zone all game long. Fastball swung on and missed for the first down. Sliding into the box, Ian Desmond. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Fastball to start things out here. Not close. It's a ball and no strikes. 1-0 pitches as slider. Swung on and missed. 1-1. One and one. Really feels like he's just on cruise control out there on the mound right now. Yeah, it really does, Matt. But this offense isn't helping him too much. It sort of feels like the next team to score is going to win this thing. Popped him up. Mercer moving to his left. Two down. Here's the catcher now, Chris Iannetta. He's 0 for 1 thus far. And he throws the fastball by him here, 0 and 1. Iannetta has had his trouble in these matchups, facing right handed pitching, that is. He shows a lot more prowess against the southpaws. Iannetta behind now, 0 and 2. And here's one that misses, so the count runs to 1 and 2 now on Iannetta. Broke out the sweeping slider right there and just missed off the edge. If he would have caught the corner. A swing and a miss. That retires the side and that will do it. Three up, three down for Colorado. Halfway home, all even at one apiece. Josh Harrison stands in. Leading off for the Pirates. Second baseman, John Harrison. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And he takes ball one. To short. Story scoops it up. And the throw to first is in time, one gun. The batter, number 15. Now at the plate, number 15. He flew out in his last at bat. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Yeah. Takes a fastball on the inside corner. Yeah, I'm shocked he let that first pitch go right there. High fastball, but usually those ones travel the furthest. Ball Sets one. the target low here, and it misses one and one. One run on three hits, and no errors so far for the Pirates. Takes this the other way to right. That gets down, and he's got himself a base hit. Boy, that wasn't a very good pitch there. Up and away. That breaking ball, d -roll, that slider intended to be down and away. Instead, it was up and away. Yeah, that was definitely a missed spot right there, Dan. You saw the batter's eyes light up, and he didn't miss it. Here's Jordy Mercer now. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. First pitch of the at bat. Hit to short. Story plays it in. One there. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Nothing doing here for Pittsburgh. We played five full, tied at one aside. So stepping in, Chad Bettis. He's set to lead us off in the sixth inning. Grounded up the first baseline. Well, this is foul for the first strike. Takes a look at a fastball down the middle for strike number two. Ground ball sent back up the middle. He gets dirty, but he can't get there, and it's into center field. So that puts the Rockies leadoff hitter aboard to start the inning. He came to play today. Not just only on the bump right there. He's thrown the ball well, but on the offensive side of the ball, he's able to contribute and help this offense put itself in position to score some more runs. Yep. 
Stephen Brault takes the ball here as he'll enter with a runner at first and nobody out. Here's Charlie Blackman now. And a swing from him yields a foul pop out of play to the right. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. Down the third baseline. Uh, this will get foul for strike two. Bettis gets his lead at first. Nobody out. Another one sent foul. The 0-2 once more. Popped him up. Frazier in foul ground. Oh, and a great diving catch for the first down. And he will scurry back to first as he'll think twice about trying to move up. How about it? That ball wasn't actually smoked. More of a soft line drive, but a nice diving catch by the infielder right there, showing a lot of range. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMay here. As he'll wait out a breaking pitch here that finds the zone for strike one. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. Here's a late swing and a miss, strike two. The bouncer to the left side, fielded cleanly. Uh, the throw pulls him off the bag. You know, D-Row, sometimes one of your best friends are your own teammates right there. Good hustle from first base to beat that throw to second, and guess what? He bought his battery, made a knock. Yeah, he definitely bought him a knock. You know what else he's going to buy him? He's going to buy him dinner on the road at some point because that's... Hold on now. That ball is down and could score a run. As he arrives at second without a play, as they jump ahead with a run scoring on the play. Absolutely scorched that base hit. Worthy of some show track love, and as you see it, it came off the bat at 110 miles an hour. That's definitely squaring a ball up. Now it's a play. Trevor Story. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Nick Kingham takes the mound to try to get out of this mess. There are two on with only one away. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And that one just missed outside. A swing and a miss on a ball that jammed him. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strikeout here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. Second and third here, one man out. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. That's the third time in this game he's gone down on strikes. Not the game he was hoping to have when he was taking batting practice, but at least his guys are ahead. Way behind that pitch, it's 0-1. Boy, this at-bat is not starting off well as he's behind 0-2 now. In a big spot like this, you have to be looking for something you can handle. Got him looking, and that'll do it. The inning is over. One for the Rockies in the inning, and it comes on the double by Arenado. Through five and a half, it's now 2-1 to one Colorado. Jordan Luplo is going to come off the bench as he'll be asked to lead off the bottom of inning number six. Jordan Luplo. Tapper up the line. That's a foul ball. The wind up and the 0 1. Grounded back up the middle. And that's through for a hit. The pinch hitter does his job to set the table, and now the top of the order goes to work. Nice piece of hitting right there. Kept his shoulders square, his hands inside the baseball, and was able to fight off a good, nice executed pitch for a knock. From the stretch, runners off for second. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. Hits are even right now at five aside.
And another foul ball. Lifted in the air toward the line and right. But this is just going to wind up being a foul ball. The 0-2 once more. Misses. That's ball one. I can't blame him one bit out on the mound. I'm shocked he didn't pick up the rosin bag and see if he could get a foul ball on that one. He had to see if he would swing way outside the zone. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Now in the box, Corey Dickerson. Corey Dickerson. First pitch on its way. There's a fastball that just misses ball one. Hard liner to center field. Blackman is there now, and he has it. Two gone. First baseman number 55. Josh Bell, the next to hit. He's bounced out and flown out in his first two plate appearances. First delivery to him on the way. Swing and a miss out in front of a changeup. Boys, we see the pitch count. It's hard to remember the last time we saw a guy pitch this efficiently. Yeah, Matt, it's incredible to watch him go after guys. He's forcing a lot of early contact, and they haven't done a whole lot with the balls they put in play against him. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Everybody needs a little love in their life right there. Nice piece of hit gets you some right there. A little soft liner. He definitely wasn't on that baseball, but he got a little luck involved, a little love, and that thing found a hole right there into the outfield. Starling Marte is at the plate as he takes a cold strike one. That's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. And that Colorado bullpen comes to life now with the lefty and a right-hander up the throw. Hard hit ball towards the hole. Backhanded. And the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Pirates strand a couple. They're down 2-1. Back here in Pittsburgh, Rockies out on top in this one as we head to the seventh. But before we get started, let's get a look at the game summary through the first six innings of baseball. Michael Feliz is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Michael Feliz. Coming to the plate now, David Dahl. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Cervelli shading to his right, and that's the first out of the inning. Digging in now, Ian Desmond. He struck out and flied out, 0 for 2 so far. First pitch coming, here it is. A swing and a miss just out in front of that fastball. Sliders in for a strike. 0 oh, and 2 count. Here's the pitch. Good change up that time, but he wouldn't bite on it. We're in the seventh inning now of a pitcher's duel. 2 to 1 our score. And a swing and a miss here, so it's a quick two outs to start the seventh. Now at the plate, Chris Ionetta. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ballgame. Tapped up the third base line. Throw in time and the side is retired. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left. Stretch time coming up here in Pittsburgh. Rockies lead this one two to one. Digging in to try it again. Francisco Cervelli. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. This thing's far from over, even though we're and he turns this one around high and deep to center field. That one is out of here. This game is tied. So it's a solo shot to dead center as the Pirates have come back to tie things at two.
Yeah, we're all tied up, and it's anybody's ball game after that blast. We live in that what-have-you-done-for-me-lately world, so that gem he was pitching doesn't mean anything anymore. Now the skipper's on his way out toward the home plate area, and I believe that means we're going to have a double switch here. Chris Russell will come on now and he'll slide into the seventh spot in the lineup following the double switch. Ryan McMahon will also come on now as he'll move into the pitcher's number nine hold in the order here on that double switch. Number 24, Ryan McMahon. Now batting, second baseman, John Harrison. Stepping in now, Josh Harrison. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Blackman is under it. And he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. Now batting. Up next number for the Buckos, 15. number 15. One for two on his line so far in the game. First delivery to him on the way. Took a wave at one around the shins with no luck. Way out in front. Well, we know what this guy's approach is. He's looking to go absolutely deep right here. I don't see him getting anything over the heart of the plate. Looked like the cut fastball there, and he got him to swing through it for the second out. Digging in once again, Jordy Mercer. In previous meetings against Chris Russell, he's gone two for six. He also has one home run. and two to Jordy Mercer. Swing and a miss at a big breaking ball, and that's how the inning comes to an end. One in the inning for the Pirates on the home run, and as the Pittsburgh TV guys like to say, clear the deck, cannonball coming. We'll march on to the eighth, and we're deadlocked now at two apiece. Here's Ryan McMahon now. And this tie ball game is a battle of the bullpens now, and I'm sure you're enjoying that, Dan. Bullpens are such a big part of baseball now, Matt. All these teams have such good 7th, 8th, and 9th inning guys. It all boils down to whose bullpen is better. Swing and a miss way behind the big fastball. A great job of changing speeds there. It's 0-2. Looks to me like he's trying to make adjustments pitch to pitch up there at the plate, but he's looked completely thrown off so far. Late on the first one, way out front on the second. The one two is taken for ball two. And he misses this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. That's a good pitch to lay off right there, that cutter inside. And that is a real tough pitch for hitters to lay off of. And a lot of times, if you do swing at that cutter in, you're going to end up with some firewood in a broken bat. Throw on to first in time, so the leadoff man is set down to open up inning number eight. Here's Charlie Blackman now. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Fastball that just misses inside. The knee buckler, and he swings and misses at it. I know he got a swinging miss right there, but that was a hittable location to a really good hitter. I don't know if he gets those back if he continues to miss in those spots. And this is swung on and missed to our quickly retired to start inning number eight. Boy, there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball, a high piece of cheese swung at and missed. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMayhew, as he'll take a called strike here on a borderline pitch at strike one. Bases are empty here with two men out. Popped him up. Bell has a play. And that ends the inning. One, two, three, go the Rockies. Score remains two to two.
So digging in now, Jordan Luplo. Leading off for the Pirates. Left fielder, Jordan Luplo. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Swung on and missed. Outclassed by that fastball for a strike. Hey, he caught him off guard right there. I like that pitch. High fastball executed. I... High and deep to right center. Blackman going back at the track, but he can't get it as it's off the wall. And he will make it all the way to third with a triple. And with nobody out, they're in great shape to push forward the go-ahead run. Well, that's one way to lead an inning off when the game is tied. The manager would have liked for him just to get on base so that one of his teammates could bring him home, but he does it almost all on his own as the ball goes off the wall and he hustles into third with a triple. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Adam Frazier. First pitch on its way. Bunt attempt here as he gets this one down. Throw to first is in time for the first down. Jose Osuna will come on to pinch hit here in a big spot. Number 36. Jose Now a ball hit high in the air. Deep down the line and left. Hooking just a little. And that nearly broke our tie, but instead it's a foul ball. 0 oh 1, here's the pitch. Changeup gets him out in front for strike two. Boy, this is a dicey situation right here, D. Where with the runner in scoring position, the sack fly brings that run in. This is where you're going to really have to try to keep the ball on the ground as a pitcher. What do you want to do as a hitter, D. Row? Yeah, right here, you are looking for anything above the belt. You see it up, you have to let it go. This is where you have to check your ego at the door. Something has to be elevated and put into the outfield. Give your team a chance to score one. Oh, that sneaks by him at short as he let that one play him. They'll cash in here as the run is in to score from third. Dan, you'll take RBIs any way you can get them, but when they give your team the lead in the late innings, man, that feels good. Oh, it especially does, especially when you start to score runs late in the game off of quality pitching. When runs are at a premium, that's one makes you feel really good about yourself. Josh Bell the next to hit. And he's a bit tardy there on the first pitch fastball. It's nothing in one. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Fly ball out toward left center field. On the run is Dahl. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Here's Starling Marte. First offering on its way. Strike one to start the at bat. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Giving chase is Dahl. And the inning is over. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We've played eight full. Pittsburgh leads this one three to two. Vasquez comes on from the pen hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Leading off the inning Nolan Arenado as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. Outfield in the no doubles defense now the first pitch 
A little bouncer. Here's one that misses high. It's one and one. Slider clocked in the mid 80s there. It's a ball and two strikes. And a swing and a miss at the curveball. A great pitch call there, and that's the first down here in the ninth. And that brings in the power hitting shortstop Trevor Story. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. And a neck high fastball that time. Boy, good bite on the slider, and it just missed inside. Well, that's a great take there right there, that slider down and in. That's one of the toughest pitches to lay off of as a hitter, that hard breaking ball coming down and in at the back foot. A tough take on a good pitch. And good patience to hold back on the curveball in the dirt. It's full now, three and two. Here's Carlos Gonzalez. He waits on deck. And a strikeout here yet again. It's been a ball game to forget thus far. Four strikeouts. Well, you have to feel pretty confident about the way this one's going to end up as a manager. Two hitters, two strikeouts from the closer. There's not a whole lot more he can do to instill confidence that he's going to wrap this thing up without any problem. Here's Cargo, Carlos Gonzalez. We could really use a knock here. 0 for 3 in the game so far. Look out, a fastball up near his dome, and that'll wake you up a bit. I certainly don't think there was any intention there. But when you see a fastball elevated coming at your face, your first thing is to get out of the way. The one two offering looked like a slider that time, but it's two and two. Last strike now for Colorado. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Hey, we were really treated to a good one today. Bottom of the eighth proved to be the difference, though, and a good job here in the ninth to close the book on this one. A one-run game this afternoon, 3-2 to two the final finish. The Pirates came through late, taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory. Davidas Nevoroskis takes home the win, so that'll just about do it. For my partners, Mark DeRosa and Dan Plezak, this is Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching a presentation of MLB Network. So long, everybody. Time of the ball game, two hours and 50 minutes. A reminder that extra tea service to the South Hills is available across the bridge at either the Wood Street or Gateway Center Station. 33X West Busway buses are also available with service to Carnegie, Bell, Crafton, and Sheridan Station. Also, return trips to Station Square on the Gateway Clipper fleet are available outside the stadium for one half hour after the final pitch.